Hey, what is going on guys? It's DK. Back at you with another video here to bring the four game NFL preseason slate on Friday. This is the last week of the preseason, unfortunately, because the preseason has treated us very well, just like the NBA Summer League. So definitely going to miss it. But um, yeah, I'll do my best to break it down here position by position for you on DraftKings. If you guys are new to the channel, welcome. My name is DK. I make daily videos and live stream for NBA NFL slates on DraftKings. If you you are unable to watch these YouTube videos. They're also up on Apple Podcasts. I will have a link down below. It's called the DKDFS Show. If you're interested in signing up for premium content, I offer a few different packages over on Patreon.com, eSports package, CSGO, and a Call of Duty included. NFL package, obviously covering every single preseason slate. And then we have NBA right around the corner. Summer League just ended, but NBA preseason starts in about a month, guys, and I cannot wait for that. Uh, and I do want to thank Prize Picks presenting sponsor of this show. So if you guys are not familiar with Prize Picks or um, this is your first time watching these videos, a few different ways you can play. And they just upgraded kind of the front end here. So uh, first way is fancy points. You basically just take straight up over, under, and fancy points. So Prize Picks has been posting players for preseason all um, for, for this whole preseason, which is it's just really uh, nice. They also have regular season stuff as well. Or you can go over to single stat. So like if you'd rather take over under on rushing yards, passing yards, receiving yards, you can do that as well. They have every single sport you can think of too. Like literally every sport. So if you guys want to try it out, you can sign up. Use the code DKDFS. DKDFS, all one word, link down below. You deposit using my code. Um, you deposit $100, you get, again, 100% match up to $100. So you deposit $50, you get a free $50 um, in your account. If you deposit $100 using my code, you get a free $100. And looking at the board for tomorrow, there's one that kind of stands out. Now, I am a big P.J. Walker fan. I am. But they have three quarterbacks on the roster. And starters are expected to get close to a half. I think I would lean under. I think the only way P.J. Walker goes over that if he if he gets in the end zone uh, on one of his, his few uh, possessions. So I think I like the under on 7.1 there for P.J. Walker. All right, and finally, I just want to thank you guys again for all of your support on the preseason videos, live stream, summer league content. I know that just ended, but that went really well for us. Um, basically, just any single uh, piece of uh, content I put up on this YouTube channel. Um, really, really do appreciate all your guys' support. If you do enjoy the content, if you could hit that like button. Let's try to aim for 100 likes on this video. Subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell so you don't upload videos and you don't go live. I'll be going live tomorrow for just a general Q and A. Um, so make sure to check that out, guys. Again, hit that notification bell and make sure to subscribe. Also. Closing in the 10,000 subscriber mark. So if you're watching this and you're not subscribed, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Okay, so um, let's get into this slate. We can quickly go over the, the Vegas odds for these games. So uh, some lower uh, projected totals here for these games. A lot of, well, some teams I'll say are resting starters. Some are projected to play them a little bit longer. So Colts and Lions, this one should be, uh, should be pretty ugly. 33 and a half over under. Colts two-point favorites. Both starters expected to rest in this one. Eagles and Jets, uh, it's a 33 and a half over under. Jets are five and a half point favorites. Steelers and Panthers are 35 over under. Panthers three and a half point favorites. And Vikings Chiefs are 38 and a half over under. The Chiefs are currently four-point favorites. Okay, so let's go over this news here. And it appears Detroit Lions and Indianapolis Colts will rest most of the starters in the preseason finale. Um, both coaches kind of discussed this. So, uh, yeah, don't expect a lot of the main guys out there for each of these teams. Okay, so for the Colts, again, Carson Wentz is going to be out. Uh, Brent Huntley has been on uh, the roster, but he hasn't played yet. So we have Eason and Sam Ellinger. Eason's going to start... And it kind of comes down to whether or not Brent Huntley plays, if I have interest in Eason or Ellinger. Like, if three quarterbacks are going to play, not so much uh, interest in any of them. If only two quarterbacks are going to play, then both these Colts, you know, uh, quarterbacks are for sure in play. So Eason going to pick up a start. Um, he's played well uh, in the preseason so far. A little bit interested in him, but I think I would actually rather go to Sam Ellinger. So, sure, he's struggled a little bit with the turnovers, but he's got that rushing upside. He did only have two carries for 11 yards last game. But he's a guy that was a great rusher in college. Almost had 2,000 uh, yards on the ground. So um, I actually do prefer Ellinger to Eason. If both play half, then again, both firmly in play. But my one worry though is, does Huntley get action and do they split it three ways? Then it wouldn't look as good for, for these Colts guys. All right, running backs and starters not expected to play. So I don't think we get any Taylor, Mack, or Naheem Hines. Jordan Wilkes is, is a veteran in the, in the roster, but he has been getting some decent work in the preseason. So we'll see. Um, I think he's definitely viable. Last game at five carries for 20 yards, two catches. 
I think the safest option is probably Benny LeMay. Um, he's been getting the majority of the work uh, or the most work at running back so far in the preseason. So do have some interest there in Benny LeMay. A little bit in uh, Deion Jackson. Uh, he had, what, four carries last game. So Wilkins, LeMay, Jackson all in play here, assuming the main guys rest. Uh, but more, more interest in LeMay and Wilkins. All right, the wide receiver position. So don't expect to see a lot of the main guys. So T.Y., Pittman, Pascal, probably Paris Campbell, all guys are expected to be out. Now, Michael Strachan, uh, they have him listed as questionable here. Where is – I have this up somewhere. Uh, where is it? Sorry, guys. I have so many tabs. Okay, so, yeah. Additionally, Mike Strachan illness and safety are both back at practice. So, uh, my guess is Strachan will, will play. It seems like it was just an illness. Um, if he does play, he's been getting a decent amount of work so far in the preseason. Again, rookie wide receiver would uh, have some interest there. And then Patman as well. So, these are two guys that are, again, fighting for a roster spot. If you take a look at the Colts depth chart, you know, with starters ex expected to, to rest a lot. We have Patman, we have uh, Doolin, we have Strachan. These are the guys mainly I want to focus on uh, with starters not expected to play. And I do think they get a decent amount of work. So, yeah, Strachan, Doolin, Patman, all three, uh, I think, are certainly viable for the Colts. As far as tight end goes, again, don't expect Jack Doyle or Moe like Cox. Um, Jordan Thompson had a couple catches last game, a little bit of interest, but there's, there's a couple other tight ends I like a little bit better on the slate. All right, so let's move on to Detroit. So Detroit uh, starters not expected to play, so no Jared Goff, Tam, who got, um, got waived. So it's going to be Tim Boyle and David Blau. Now, both quarterbacks are a little bit underwhelming. Uh, Blau's actually been a little bit better, so I would lean Blau over Tim Boyle, but, man, this Lions team of the preseason at least has not looked good. It's... It's going to be tough to be a Lions fan this year, as I'm sure a lot of you know I am a Lions fan, so not expected to have a big year this year. At the running back position, so Swift's been banged up. I don't expect to see Williams, maybe a little bit of Jefferson. Um, Mills, I'm not going to try to pronounce his, his last name, call him by his first name, Godwin. And uh, Reynolds are three guys who have been getting a lot of the work in the preseason so far. Now, they said they want to give uh, Craig Reynolds a lot of the special team snaps. So, like, does that mean he gets limited uh, carries? I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but those are the three backs I expect to get a, a decent amount of work. Mills, Godwin, and Chase Reynolds. All three are viable options. At the wide receiver position, it's just ugly, man. This Detroit team has really struggled to move the ball in the preseason. St. Brown's been the best receiver, but he's a starter, so like he could not play in this one. If you want to focus on guys kind of like on the roster bubble, maybe Cephas, Tom Kennedy, Geronimo Allison. Tom Kennedy's been their best receiver so far in the preseason for what it's worth. Uh, he had, what, four catches on four targets last game. So I guess a little bit of interest. But I don't, definitely, I don't want to go crazy in this Lions uh, wide receiving uh, corps. And then um, tight end, really not much for me here for the Detroit Lions. All right, let's move on to Pittsburgh. So Steelers, what we know, starters not expected to play. Well, we know Big Ben and Najee Harris. I don't think the starting receivers get much run either because the first three pieces in games, we actually saw a decent amount of work for, for the starting wide receivers. So no Big Ben. Uh, Mason Rudolph also out. So that's pretty significant, right? We only have Dwayne Haskins and Josh Jobs. Now, we don't ha we know Dwayne Haskins is going to start. We don't know how much he's going to play. I would think, based on other preseason games, he actually plays a little bit more than a half, right? That first, uh, the Hall of Fame game, he got the most time. He seems to be the guy the Steelers want to see uh, out there. So I would think it could be a half and a half. And if it is, you know, a half for Haskins, a half for Dobbs, then Dobbs actually makes for a good contrarian play because he's got that rushing upside. But if it's going to be like two and a half to three quarters out of Haskins, then he looks like one of the better quarterback plays in the slate. So maybe we'll get some clarity on this before lock. I would guess probably not. But yeah, both Haskins, Dobbs in play. I think Haskins is a safer option. But uh, again, if both only if both get a half, then maybe I lean Dobbs for that rushing upside. Now, the running back position, Najee Harris not expected to play. Benny Snell's been banged up, but he is expected to play. Now, we don't really know what his role is going to be in this team, if he's, if he's even going to make the team. So we'll see. McFarland, Samuels, Bellage have been the guys that have been getting a lot of the work in the preseason. I expect more, uh, more of those three again. All three are decent PPR backs. So uh, interest in all three of those guys. Again, we'll, we'll see how much work Benny Snell actually gets. But yeah, McFarland, Samuels, and Keelan Bellage are the guys that are the most interested on the Steelers' side. As far as wide receivers go, so... We have confirmation Big Ben and Najee Harris are out. I don't, Claypool's a little bit banged up. I don't think Juju and Deontay play in this game. So if they're out, then maybe a guy like James Washington. Uh, he's gotten a lot of work so far in the preseason, and um, he had four targets last game. If, if a lot of the stars are out and he, you know, starts the game at wide receiver, then I think James Washington's actually a pretty decent play. You know, you could go to a guy like Rico Boozy, who's been making some impressions in training camp. So, um, 
you know, Boozy, James Washington, you know, Ray Ray McLeod's a speedster. Anthony Johnson probably gets a decent amount of work. There's actually, if the stars out for the Steelers, uh, Simmons got waived. They're a little bit thin at wide receiver. So we'll see how many guys are, are actually available. If they only have like five, six healthy receivers, then yeah, I think you can make an argument for a lot of those guys. Again, like Washington, Boosie, Johnson, Ray Ray McLeod, a guy is probably looking to at the tight end position. So Pat Fairmuth caught two touchdowns last game. He's only two catches. We'll see how much work he gets this game, if he's going to play. I don't expect Ebron. We'll see about Fairmuth. If Fairmuth plays, a little bit of interest in him since tight end is weak. If Fairmuth is out, then I think you make the argument for Zach Gentry, Michigan product, familiar with him. He actually is a decent pass-touching tight end. If they do rest the first, uh, you know, the first, the top two tight ends, then I expect Gentry to get a decent amount of work in this game. So a little bit of interest there in Zach Gentry. All right, let's move on to Carolina. So let's go over this news. Uh, Sam Darnold, starters expected to get an extended look for Steelers. So... Here, I'll read you this quote. Where is it? Um, they want to give him about a half. Uh, let's see. Where is this quote? Sorry. Are, yeah, expecting to play close to a half. Okay. When asked about how much stars will play, we'll answer, I'm not really prepared to say much other than that my hope it's that it's more than a quarter closer to a half. So if we only get about a quarter, it's not going to look as good. If we do get that closer to a half or a full half of the starters, then there's going to be some guys that are interesting here for Carolina. So we'll start with Sam Darnold himself. And if he's going to get close to a half, he's firmly in play. He hasn't got a ton of runs so far in the preseason, but um, if they do get closer to a half of work, then yeah, Darnold's viable. Again, the reason I think I lean under and Peach of Washington is if the starters get about a half, and they have, you know, a half of football for Peach Walker and Will, Will Greer. That means, what, only about a quarter for each? So that's why I would lean the under that 7.1 projection there on uh, prize picks. All right, the running back position, well, the starters are expected to play, but no McCaffrey. So a bona fide, Rod Smith been a little bit banged up. I think Shubba Hubbard is an interesting option here. Uh, he's been getting, he's been starting the games and getting a good amount of work, a majority of work in the first half. Um, hasn't really had a massive game yet, but I expect him to get more opportunities in this game. So yeah, Shovel Hubbard's the guy for me at Carolina at running back, the wide receiver position. So starters, you know, expect to anywhere from a little over a quarter to close to a half. So like, yeah, Robbie Anderson, definitely, definitely playable, right? If you get about a half of Robbie Anderson, for sure. And then we have rookie Marshall Jr. has really been looking good in camp. Right now he's the number three wide receiver. DJ Moore a little bit banged up. So like the main guys I'm actually looking to for Carolina. Robbie Anderson, Marshall, I think are the two guys I like the best here. All right, at the tight end position, so um, Dan Arnold, I mean, he's a decent pass-catching tight end. I would assume he probably gets a decent amount of work here at the starter, so a little bit of interest in him, a little bit of interest. Okay, let's so move on to Philadelphia. So right now we still don't have um, concrete news on how much work the starters are going to get if they even are going to play. So right now it's kind of just wait and see. He said that he's yet to make a decision on Hurts' availability. I've been doing some digging on Twitter. Still haven't seen anything concrete yet, so... We'll see. And he didn't play last game because it was like a stomach bug. Um, if Jalen Hurts does play and he gets he's, he, and he is going to get close to half, then I like him because he's got that rushing upside. So we'll just have to see, wait and see approach here for Philadelphia. Uh, the running back position, so again, kind of wait and see. Um, either way, I like Gainwell. He's been getting a little bit of work with the starters, also been getting a lot with the backups. Great PPR back. He's been lining up in the slot a little bit. We know DraftKings full point PPR. So like Gainwell, good amount. We'll see about Miles Sanders and how much the starters do play. And then uh, Huntley also have a little bit of interest in him. So they said he's questionable. He should be good to go in this one. All right, the wide receiver position. So it's a lot of the, it's the younger guys I'm getting a lot of work here. So Devonta Smith, Jalen Rieger, Quez Watkins, the three guys I'm looking to. Hightower, Fulgham have been disappointing. They've been losing um, snaps. J.J. Arcega, Whiteside have been losing snaps. So it's going to be the, the young guys. Devonta Smith, Jalen Rieger, and Quez Watkins. All three played a majority of that, that half last game. And we know the upside of Devontae Smith. We know Jalen Rager is a guy that uh, has a lot of upside. And even Quez Watkins. We saw him break that long one. So we'll see uh, how much the Stars actually get. But I think it's those three guys I'm looking to at the moment. And then the tight end position kind of depends. So if the starters are going to play more, then yeah, Goddard and Ertz are definitely playable, right? If they get close to half, they can go out and get you, you know, five, six fancy points each. We know the Eagles love going to their tight end. Now, if we get news that a lot of the starters are going to be out, I think a little bit interesting in Jack Stoll. He had, what, three or four catches last game? Um, so yeah, Stoll will be a guy that if the starters are going to be limited, I think you could look to him. All right, moving on to the Jets. So right now we have news that the Jets are expected to play close to a half here. Um, 
it's a video, but yeah, uh, let's see. Expect the Jet Stars to play preseason finale, Zach Wilson, final edition, um, and they expect, again, close to a half if you do watch this video. I'm not going to play it, but that's what they're thinking right now. Is that, now, Zach Wilson has looked good so far in the preseason, so if we get about a half of football for Zach Wilson, another quarterback that is definitely in play in this preseason slate. Now, running back's a little bit tricky, right? Because we still don't know who the starting running back's going to be. We have Tevin Coleman, Ty Johnson, Carter. Perrine's a little bit banged up. So they might only have like three main running backs here, which I think all three would be viable. I think all three kind of get mixed in with the starters. And then Josh Adams might get, you know, kind of the garbage time duty. So um, Coleman, Ty Johnson, Carter, all certainly uh, in play. I think Ty Johnson's probably their best pass catching back. So maybe a small lean to him of the, of the three uh, Jets backs. But yeah, I think all three guys are definitely in play. At the wide receiver position, so Corey Davis has been a guy that has been being peppered with a target so far when he's been out there. If we get about a half of football, then I think Corey Davis actually makes for a pretty good wide receiver play. And uh, Jameson Crowder in the slot is fine. Obviously more uh, a veteran, but starters, if they get close to half, those guys can, can definitely be viable here. And if you wanted to go to a guy in the second half, maybe like Braxton Berrios, slot wide receiver. Again, he's not, he doesn't have the big play upside, but he can get you those short catches. And uh, we know wide receiver is a super volatile position, especially in the preseason, so... Uh, Barrios is a guy that I think you could uh, make the argument for there at uh, kind of in the second half. All right, for tight end for the Jets, eh, eh. we have Tyler Croft and Herndon. Herndon's obviously been very disappointing the last couple of years. Nah, I don't really have um, a liking to either of these guys. All right, let's finish it up with Minnesota and Kansas City. So starters not expected to play here for the Vikings. They still have a decent amount of quarterbacks here on this roster, and they haven't really been moving the ball the best. I'm just going to stay away right now from the Minnesota quarterbacks. At the running back position, so Madison banged up. Don't expect to see Dalvin Cook. Uh, we're going to have Amir Abdullah, Ido Smith, newly signed, and uh, A.J. Rose, the three guys that, that should get the work in this game. Now, A.J. Rose, we know he had the big game uh, week one, went for 25 carries, 100 yards. Week two, not so much. I think he had under 10 yards and like seven carries. Again, they have a Dula who is a good pass catching back, and then they've newly signed Edo Smith. So those three running backs should play. Um, I would expect AJ Rose to be the most popular, but if he's going to get all the ownership, then sure, I, I think you can make the argument for maybe like an Amir Abdullah. Obviously, again, he is a decent pass catching running back. At the wide receiver wide receiver position, you don't expect to see the main guys. So uh, Jefferson Thielen definitely not. We'll see about Osborne and BB. Um, if they do end up starting, then a little bit of interest in them. But yeah, Smith Marset, the rookie. I expect him to get a decent amount of work. He had zero uh, zero catches last game, but he had, did have two targets. And right now he's kind of on that roster bubble. So Smith Marset, I think, makes for a good argument. And if they do end up resting guys like Osborne and uh, Chad Beebe and D.D. Westbrook not expected to play, then Minnesota could be really thin at wide receiver. And this could be a situation kind of like the Rams, where like if they're only going to have like four healthy receivers, then we're probably going to load up. So that'll one that'll be one to keep an eye on with the status of like Osborne and BB if they do end up playing in this one. At the tight end position, not much interest here for Minnesota. All right, let's finish up with the Chiefs, guys. And oh boy, this is going to be a headache. So... Earlier in the week, Reed was not committal for snaps for starters. Now it sounds like the preseason uh, Vikings will look uh, in terms of action for the starters. What we'll do for this game is we'll play the ones for the first half, Reed told reporters. And yeah, another quote here, Andy Reed said he plans to play the ones the first half in, the pre in Friday's preseason finale against the Vikings. Now, we, uh, we know Andy Reed can't really be trusted for preseason. Last few years, he's burned us. Now, Last week, everyone kind of bought into that and thinking Andy Reid is going to troll us, and he actually didn't. Like, the starters played basically the entire half. I had, like, a low owned Mahomes that in three drives did nothing. I was so tilted about that, but I did have low owned Pringle and Harbin, who absolutely smashed and got me second in a GPP. Um, yeah, so this is going to kind of come down to how much you trust Andy Reid. Well, this is what I don't want to see. All right, uh, the one bonus is that we got a lot of snaps last week, Reid said. I can do whatever we need to do for this game because of last week's game. That added flexibility means that if Reed feels like pulling the first team after a single series, he'll feel comfortable and confident to do so. Like why I do not want my caching to come down to guessing correctly on what Andy Reid is going to do. Now, I did guess correctly last time. The starters actually did get close to a half. A lot of the starters got the full half. <sighs> Just another headache, right? Because Mahomes and the starters could literally play only one series or they could play close to half. Now, let's just say this. If I knew that the starters were going to play full half, like Andy Reid says they are, load up on the Chiefs. But 
they could literally only play a series too. So this one is just a headache. Again, Mahomes, depends how you think Andy Reid is going to go about this. I guessed correctly last time. We'll see what I end up doing this time if I do go to Mahomes or not. Um, now, if the Stars only get about a series or so, then I think you can make the argument for a guy like Shane Bouchelle, who has looked pretty good so far in preseason. So a little bit of interest in there if you think Andy Reid is going to troll us. As far as running backs go, so Clyde edwards helaire has a questionable tag as well as Darrell Williams. Well, let's go over this news. And sorry, I have so many tabs. So catching up with today's injury news, Darrell Williams, concussion protocol, and Clyde edwards helaire both practice for the Chiefs this afternoon. Both practice. Starters expected to play. We'll see if these guys go. If they do go, then I think both should be pretty low owned. And like, let's just say this. So Clyde edwards helaire has a questionable tag. Let's say he plays and Andy Reid's actually telling the truth and he gets a full half. Well, then you're going to get like a super low on Clyde Solaire who could smash. But again, coming off the ankle injury, do they take it easy on him? That's the worry with these two backs right now. So we'll see what the status of their uh, what the status is for them tomorrow. Now, if they both miss, then the Chiefs are thin. They have uh, Jarek McKinnon, who's a great PPR back. They've been getting involved in the passing game, who I like. Darwin Thompson, kind of a do it all guy, another good pass catching back. And they also have Derek Gore. So these three backs can become really good plays if Edwards Flair and Darrell Williams are going to miss tomorrow. All right, so at wide receiver, Tyreek Hill uh, dressed last game but didn't play. So we will have to see what his status is for tomorrow. Obviously, keep an eye on that. Now, if Tyreek Hill misses again, then we have Hardman and Pringle, and this just comes down to, do you think Andy Reid's going to troll us? If you think Andy Reid's telling the truth and they get closer to half, then Hardman and Pringle are two of the best wide receiver plays in the slate. If they only play one series, they're not good plays. So, ugh, right, tough one. So Hardman and Pringle, Demarcus Robinson, I think are three safe options if, and I mean if, the starters do get close to half. Now, if you think Andy Reid is going to troll us, then you can go to Fountain, who actually has looked good in the second half of both preseason games so far. So he'd be the guy that, so if you think Reid's telling the truth, Hardman, Pringle, Robinson. And Hill if he plays. If you think he's trolling us, you can go to a guy like Fountain. And finally, tight end. So Travis Kelsey, same thing I'll say. If you think we get it close to a half, I think he's probably the best play at tight end. If you think Andy Reid's going to troll us, then you go to Noah Gray. Rookie, good pass catching, good, good pass catching tight end. So again, a lot of if-then statements for the Chiefs. So two different ways you can play it. You can you know maybe get a decent amount of exposure to the Chiefs, hope Reid is telling the truth, or you can go very underweight on them and hope that he is trolling us and they only get about a quarter. So basically the same analysis I had for the Chiefs as last preseason slate. But I will say, okay, so last preseason slate, again, we got all those Chiefs starters at like sub 10% owned because everyone thought Reed was going to troll us and he didn't. So is this a game where people load up in the Chiefs and then he actually trolls us? I don't know. So tough one there for sure. Uh, and hopefully we do get some clarity, but I'm, I'm 95% sure we won't. Uh, with Andy Reid. But yeah, guys, that's going to do it for the video today. So if you haven't enjoyed the content so far, I would really appreciate it. Leave a like button on the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell so you don't upload videos and you know when I go live. Again, I will be doing a general Q&A live stream tomorrow. Make sure to check that out, guys. Thanks again. Have a great day, and I'll see you all tomorrow on the live stream.